Hello calculus kids, this is Mr. Bean. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. Today we're going to be using our calculator again, in fact quite a bit today. You'll use it throughout the whole lesson and on your mastery check. We're going to do some really important stuff. So you need to make sure you have a calculator. This is not something where you just watch me do it. You have to practice with me. So regardless of the type of calculator you have, uh, you can do this as long as, well, it's a, if it's a graphing calculator. So if you don't have a TI-84 or TI-83, the 83 will do this too, you're going to need to search on the web for your own instructions on everything that I'm doing. What we're gonna focus in on is how to take the derivative at a point using a blank calculator. So for me, I would put TI-84 calculator. I'd search for that. There's lots of videos and things out there. I can't teach you every possible calculator of how this works. So I will start off with just our calculator, which is a TI-84. The calculator can estimate. It's not exact, but it's really close. Usually close within like four or five decimal places, which for us is plenty close enough. So here's what's really cool. You are going to learn how to take the derivative of sine of square root of x later on this year, later in this unit and into the next unit. You'll be able to do this by hand, but the calculator can do it for you right now. So you can take the derivative of anything if you take the derivative at a point and your calculator is going to do it for you. So here's how it works. All right, so you pull up your calculator. We're gonna do this number one right here. All we have to do is on mine, you do math and then option number eight. So you can scroll down here to where it says N derived. It's like taking the derivative or you can just hit eight. So again, that's math eight. So you may need to write that in the corner of your notes, side of your notes, math eight. We're gonna use it over and over again. Okay, so now here we're going to take the derivative with respect to X. So I go ahead and type the X button right there. And then here we go ahead and plug in the function. So in, in this example, it's sine of square root of X. So let me hit sine and then second square root of X, the variable button. And now I can hit to the right and scroll out of that. And then here we're gonna say at what X value do we want? We want it to be at the X value of two. This is going to find F prime of two and we don't have to do like any work. This is awesome, there it is. So that represents, that number right there, represents the slope of the tangent line of this function right at x equals two. So we're gonna write, uh, we'll just write 0 0.055, and then we could just stop right there, uh, rounded and truncated, it's the same answer. So there we go. All right, so let's do this again real quick. This time, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So math button, and then option number eight. I'll just hit, type the number eight, and then x, derivative with respect to x. Now I'm gonna do the natural log of one divided by, make sure I put my entire denominator in fractions, five, or in parentheses, excuse me, five minus x. Close my parentheses, and there's my entire function, and then I want x equals 1.3, so 1.3, and then that, will spit out my answer of 0 0.270. And again, rounding or truncating, either one will work for this lesson. In fact, on some of them, I give both answers so you can see it on the solutions. On some of them, I just go four decimal places so you can tell uh, that maybe your answer is right. Okay, so we've done that. Now let's create an equation of a tangent line. So remember what we need for a tangent line. So what I try to remind my students is every time I see an equation of a line, I just remember that this is what I'm looking for. And then I just fill in the stuff that I need to, whoops, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself, sorry. Uh, X to the one. Okay, so what is next? I'm gonna say Y minus all right, so now what's the y1? I just plug in a one. So again, you can use your calculator. I'll do this one real quick. And we, it's okay on this assignment if you wanna just go ahead and round everything. You don't have to do exacts like with a radical. I mean, this is the square root of one over two, but you don't have to leave it like that. Uh, 0 0.707 equals, okay, now what, how do we get the m? Remember that m is the same thing as the derivative because this that's the slope of the tangent line. So we want the derivative at one. That's what goes right here in front. So I'll go back to my calculator and then we plug that in. We're gonna say the derivative, so math option eight uh, and with respect to X and then my function, plug that in. All right, there's my function and then uh, all uh, at X equals one. There we go. And enter. OK, 
Okay, so there's my derivative, which means slope of my tangent line. So let's go ahead and plug in a negative 0 0.17. And now this, I could round up to seven or truncate whichever one you feel comfortable with. I'm gonna go ahead and write four decimals. If you always write four decimals, actually you can't go wrong. If you just go four decimals and stop, uh, but they only grade the first three dec decimal places. And then uh, X minus one. And then there is our answer. Equation of the tangent line rounded to three decimal places. So you can see this is really useful on the calculator portions, it makes this really fast. So uh, later in the year, you're gonna actually learn how to do all of these by hand. You could do every single one of these by the end of this year by hand, actually within another month or two. But sometimes when you're allowed to use the calculator, it's so much faster. Just use the calculator, don't try and do it by hand. Okay, next up, we're gonna look at how to estimate the derivative if we have a table of values. Now, one thing that to use a table of values to estimate the derivative, the function has to be what's called differentiable. We are going to talk about what differentiable means in the next lesson, the very next lesson actually, but just r real quick so you know, it just means that the graph is continuous and it's smooth. So it's just one continuous graph somehow. There's no breaks in it at all. Okay, so we have to know that for the tables. Just assume every problem in this packet is going to be differentiable. Okay, so you don't have to stress about that. I'm not going to trick you with anything in this. So uh, let's estimate the derivative at x equals 3. So right here, what would be the slope right in between these two values? So we don't know, there's really no way for us to know, but we could get a relatively good estimate by taking the points that are surrounding it. So if I take f of four and subtract f of two, then I'm going to do the average rate of change between, so then that would be, oops, and then we have the x values on bottom. So here we have the average rate of change. So then if I plug in what those numbers are, this would be 10 minus three all over two. So that's gonna equal seven halves or 3.5. And then we put our units, which is miles per hour. All right, there is how we get an estimate a relatively good estimate of three because three is right in between four and two. So you just do the average rate of change from two to four. Again, three is the instantaneous rate of change. So this is just an estimate of what that instantaneous rate of change might be as close as we could get. If there was other values in the table that we might be able to use, we could. If I did zero to four, it would be an estimate, but maybe not as close. We want to do the one, the interval that is closest to the number we're working with. Okay, and then the last thing, this is exactly the same thing. So let's just do this real quick and I'll show you why I have this one in the notes. W prime, so here's W, uh, and we're gonna do W prime of 100, where X is 100, so that's gonna be right in the middle of 80 and 120. So we will say 500 minus 700 all over, and then my 120 minus 80. That gives me 200 over 40, and that equals five. Now, the reason I have this one on here is because the units are different. Notice that it's W of X is already a rate of change. It's gallons per second. So I'm going to have gallons per second per second because I have it this per this second. Okay, so gallons per second per second. Those of you who have had physics, this is gonna be a little bit familiar or the easiest way of writing this would just be gallons per and then you can just say second squared. That's a lot easier to say your units, okay? So just pay attention to the units. Uh, if it's gallons per second, per second, you can write it as per second squared. Okay, that is everything for this lesson. Okay, pretty simple and straightforward. Rock that master check, and we'll see you back in the next lesson where we'll learn about differentiability.